What does the Bible say about Christian women pastors? There is perhaps no more hotly debated issue in the Christian church today and that of Christian women serving as pastors. As a result, it is important to not see this issue as men versus women. There are Christian women who believe Christian women should not serve as pastors and that the Bible places restrictions on the ministry of women. And there are Christian men who believe Christian women and serve as pastors and that there are no restrictions on women in ministry. This is not a matter of chauvinism or discrimination. It is an issue of biblical interpretation. The word of Jehovah proclaims a woman should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She must be silent first, Timothy 2. 11 to 12. In the Christian church, God assigns different roles to Christian men and women. This is a result of the way mankind was created and the way in which sign entered the world. 1 Timothy 2. 13 to 14. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. God, through the Apostle Paul, restricts women from serving in roles of teaching and or having spiritual authority over men. This precludes Christian women from serving as pastors over men, since pastoring definitely includes preaching, teaching publicly, and exercising spiritual authority. There are many objections to this view of Christian women in pastoral ministry. A common one that Paul restricts women from teaching because in the first century, women were typically uneducated. However, 1 Timothy 2, 11 to 14 nowhere mentions educational status. If education were a qualification for Christian ministry, then the majority of Jesus' disciples would not have been qualified. A second common objection that Paul only restricted the women of Ephesus from teaching men. First Timothy was written to Timothy, the pastor of the Christian church in Ephesus. Ephesus was known for its temple to Artemis, and women were the authorities in that branch of paganism. Therefore, the theory goes, Paul was only reacting against the female-led customs of the Ephesian idolaters and the Christian church needed to be different. However, the book of 1 Timothy nowhere mentions Artemis, nor does Paul mention the standard practice of Artemis worshippers as a reason for the restrictions in 1 Timothy 2, 11 to 12. A third objection is that Paul is only referring to Christian husbands and wives, not Christian men and women in general. The Greek words for woman and man in 1 Timothy it could refer to husbands and wives. However, the basic meaning of the words is broader than that. Further, the same Greek words are used in verses 8 to 10. Are only Christian husbands to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger and disputing verse 8 are only Christian wives to dress modestly, have good deeds, and worship God verses 9 to 10, of course not. Verses 8 to 10 clearly refer to all men and women, not just husbands and wives. There is nothing in the context that would indicate a narrowing to husbands and wives in verses 11 to 14. Yet another objection to this interpretation of women in Christian pastoral ministry references women in positions of leadership in the Bible, specifically Miriam, Deborah, and Huldah in the Old Testament. It is true that these women were chosen by God for special service to him and that they stand as models of faith, courage, and yes, leadership. However, the authority of women in the Old Testament 
is not relevant to the issue of Christian pastors in the church. The New Testament epistles present a new paradigm for God's people, the church, the body of Christ, and that paradigm involves an authority structure unique to the church, not for the nation of Israel or any other Old Testament entity. Similar arguments are made using Priscilla and Phoebe in the New Testament. In Acts 18, Priscilla and Aquila are presented as faithful ministers for Christ. In verse 18, Priscilla's name is mentioned first, suggesting to some that she was more prominent in ministry than her husband. The detail of whose name comes first is probably inconsequential, because in verses 2 and 26 the order is reversed from that of verse 18. Did Priscilla and her husband teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to Apollos? Yes, in their home they explain to him the way of God more adequately acts 18 to 26 does the bible ever say that priscilla pastored a church or taught publicly or became the spiritual leader of a congregation of saints no as far as we know priscilla was not involved in ministry activity in contradiction to 1 timothy to 11 to 14 in romans 16 to 1 Phoebe is called a deacon or servant in the church and is highly commended by Paul. But as with Priscilla, there is nothing in scripture to indicate that Phoebe was a pastor or a teacher of men in the church. Able to teach is given as a qualification for elders, but not for deacons. 1 Timothy 3, 1-13. Titus 1 to 6 to 9. The structure of 1 Timothy 11 to 14 makes the reason why Christian women cannot be pastors perfectly clear. Verse 13 begins with 4, giving the cause of Paul's statement in verses 11 to 12. Why should Christian women not teach or have authority over men? Because Adam was created first than Eve, and Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived, verses 13 to 14. God created Adam first, and then created Eve to be a helper for Adam. The order of creation has universal application in the family of Ephesians 5, 22 to 33, and in the Christian church. The fact that Eve was deceived is also given as a reason for women not serving as Christian pastors or having spiritual authority over men. 1 Timothy 2.2.14 This does not mean that Christian women are gullible or that they are all more easily deceived than men. If all women are more easily deceived, why would they be allowed to teach children who are easily deceived and other women who are supposedly more easily deceived. The text simply says that women are not to teach men or have spiritual authority over men because he was deceived. God has chosen to give Christian men the primary teaching authority in the church. Many Christian women excel in gifts of hospitality, mercy, teaching, evangelism, helping and serving. Much of the ministry of the local Christian church depends on women. Women in the Christian church are not restricted from public praying or prophesying. 1 Corinthians 11 to 5, only from having spiritual teaching authority over men. The Bible nowhere restricts women from exercising the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12. Christian women, just as much as men, are called to minister to others, to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22-23, and to proclaim the gospel to the lost. Matthew 28, 18-20. Acts 1, 8. 1 Peter 3, 2, 15. God has ordained 
that only Christian men are to serve in positions of spiritual teaching authority in the church. This does not imply men are better teachers or that women are inferior or less intelligent. It is simply the way God designed the Christian church to function. Men are to set the example in spiritual leadership in their lives and through their words. Christian women are also to set an example in their lives, but in a different way. 1 Peter 3, 1 to 6. Christian women are encouraged to teach other women. Titus 2, 3 to 5. The Bible also does not restrict Christian women from teaching children. The only activity Christian women are restricted from is teaching or having spiritual authority over men. This bars women from serving as pastors to men. This does not make women less important by any means. Rather, it gives them a ministry focus more in agreement with God's design. Oh,